In the previous video, you learned how easy it is to calculate a total by using the SUM function and AutoSUM. In this lesson, we are going to discuss four other common functions that you will use in Excel. Average, Max, Min, and Count. Are you ready to learn about those functions? Then let's get started. The average, max, min, and count follow the same syntax as the sum function that we covered in the previous video. Let's take a look at the exam scores for this midterm exam. Now, if you haven't already downloaded the workbook to follow along, you can find the link in the description below. So let's first average the score for our students. Remember that our formulas and functions always start with an equal sign, equal, and as I start typing average, I get my menu that pops down and I see average here. I can continue typing it out or I can just double click right here in the menu area. And when I do that, it automatically completes the name of the function and opens the parentheses for me. Now I want to average the scores in the range B4 through B11. So with my mouse, I'm just going to click, hold, and drag from B4 to B11. And it automatically inputs it. And then I can hit Enter to close that out. So it looks like 78 was the average score for my students. Let's take a look at the highest score. I want to pull out what the highest score is from this list of scores. Now, this example that we're looking at, I only have a few students listed here. So I could easily just say, oh, it looks like 96. Why do I need a formula for that? Well, what if I had a list of 50 students or 100 students or even just 25 students? It's not as easy to just visually look through that list and pull out what the highest score was. So in this case, I want to pull out the maximum number within this list. So again, equal max M A, and there it is right there. And I can see it returns the largest value in a set of values. So I'm going to double click on that. It opens my parentheses and now I can select my range and enter to close that up. And it pulls out 96 is the highest score. So what was the lowest score for my midterm exams that I gave the students? Equal, this time minimum, M-I-N, returns the smallest number in a set of values. I'll double click on that, select the range, enter 55 was my lowest score. Now these may seem really simple, but learning how to use these functions will allow you to solve more complex problems with your spreadsheets. And you'll find that these functions are often nested with other functions. So as you get more advanced, you will really see why you need to know some of these more basic functions. So I encourage you to practice with this a little bit. Follow along, complete the midterm exam, find the average score, highest score, lowest score. And for a little additional practice, there's another spreadsheet you can click on. And then you can find the average price of the homes that were sold in the most excellent neighborhood. You can return the highest price, what's the lowest price, and look at this new formula, median price. Let's check out what that is. M-E-D-I-A-N returns the median or the number that's exactly in the middle of a given set of numbers. So this has the same syntax as the other three that we just looked at. But instead of returning an average, it's finding, well, what is the middle of this range of numbers that we have? And let's go ahead and find out what that is. And it looks like 375,000 was the middle. So go ahead and practice with these. And remember, if you have any questions, just put those down in the comments and I will get back to you. But it's time to look at one more function before we complete this lesson, the count function. Let's move over to the count worksheet and we're going to take a look 
at our local rec center softball league sign up. And I want to know what is the total number of players that have signed up. Well, I'm going to start my function again. Can I say this too often? With an equal sign. And start typing in count. And we notice that we have a lot of count functions. Count, count A, count blank, count if, count ifs. So let's take a look at what count does. Counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So it looks like within my data range here, I do have one column that contains numbers, the registration fee. So I'm going to double click on count and I'm going to select this range. And it looks like I have 52 players signed up. You know what I get a lot of people who tell me, well, Mickey, I can just look over here in my row heading area, see that it starts on 4 and that it ends on 53. Just make a little subtraction and I can figure that out. Yeah, but what if you had a list of 200 players, 400 players, or just a list that went on and on? You're not going to scroll down just to see where that ends. So a formula works out much better. Okay, but let's take a look at something else. Let's go beyond just the count because what does the count do? It only counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So let's say I'm keeping a list of my softball players, but a few of them have not paid their registration fee yet. If I use this column, that's going to put my number off if what I'm trying to figure out is the total number of players that have signed up. I don't care if they paid the registration fee or not. So let's take a look at another count function. Equal count. Let's see what this count A does. Counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. Oh, that gives me a lot more to work with here. So I can actually use maybe column A, B, C, or D. I'm just going to cancel out of that for a minute. If I scroll down, I can see none of those are blank. So I'm going to go ahead and use the count A. Double click on that. And I'm going to select, let's just say last name. Usually everyone has the last name, so I know there won't be any blanks there unless there's a data entry error. Hit enter. And now I know that I have 52 players signed up, but what would this 46 tell me? If my question were how many players have paid their registration fee, then that's the formula that I'm going to use there. So how many total players have signed up and who has and there is the count and the count a function. You are doing great! So just think in a short amount of time you have learned quite a few functions. We first reviewed simple formulas then the sum function and then we learned average max, min, and count. If you have any questions regarding this video, please post them in the comments below. Now it's time to build on what you've learned so far. We're going to look at a function in the next video that requires multiple arguments, the network days function. You can use the network days function to determine how many days you have to work on a project based on a start date and an end date. But that's in the next video. Are you ready? I'll see you over there.